Well, I haven't had a whole lot of sightings lately, but I did have one about two weeks ago. I was, I was getting ice cream out of the freezer and happened to see one walk past my pickup. I couldn't see the top half of it. There was so much glare reflecting on the window. I just seen its legs do about three steps, walk past the big old one ton truck. And then, you know, probably about eight foot tall, probably one of the girls. Now I've tried to, I've tried to get him to take food from my hand before. And I got, and I actually had a witness. My boy was in the house while I was doing it. And uh, it was an adult female. Now, I've had some pretty close encounters with them, including face to face. I've been surrounded by the young males. Hello, and welcome back to the old podcast, Rooney. Uh, thanks everybody for watching and listening. However, you, however you get me. Uh, if you ha if you haven't subscribed, please hit that little red button. I don't know if it's red anymore. It Maybe white. I think it might be white or gray. But whatever the case, please subscribe to this channel. Please share it with all your friends. And as a reminder, this is episode 74, 75, I think. It's mid-70s, something or other. I have a bunch of other episodes, some better than others, but they're available on audio. Mm -hmm. You can cut your grass. You can go on a road trip. You can uh, kill time while working out while, by listening to my voice. It'll make you want to work out harder so you won't hear me talking. But just check out bobbydizzle.com. And uh, right there on that little front page is where all the ways you can listen to me via podcast apps on your phone iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify and iTunes of course if you'll click that anchor link I think it is the anchor link that is where you'll find all that stuff but but enough about me Today's uh, here's today's episode is Mr. David Parker from northern Missouri uh, over near the Iowa border and um, got a lot of Bigfoot on his property a lot of good stories you will they, they were phenomenal uh, it's almost as good. His stories are almost as good as old Randy Bauer from Minnesota. So if you like if you like a good Bigfoot story, the old the old uh, good old boy that lives out in the woods and experiences them, you know, uh, gifts them and whatnot, takes recordings. This is your episode. So um, let's just get to it. Here's Mr. David Parker from Missouri, and uh, once again, please subscribe, please share, follow me on the uh, audio portion, BobbyDizzle.com. What people don't realize is that they are telepaths and they can't, that's why we don't catch them. That's why you get like those guys from mountain monsters with all their ridiculous, useless traps that will never, ever work. Ain't going to happen. You're going to trap ones. And once you betray their trust, they'll never trust you again. Where are you located at, uh, David? Northern Missouri. Oh, northern Missouri. Okay, some of the southern states. Interesting. Not too far. You know, I'm kind of not too far from the Iowa border. Yeah, I'm in Texas in the Gulf Coast uh, near Houston. Okay. And, the, well, the Bigfoot, they're all over the place. You know, people don't realize just how many of them there really are. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if there's at least a half a million of them in North America. Do you think they're different species? You know, they all generally look the same, but they're different. You know how squirrels, well, you, you got your gray squirrel, you got your... I think that there's, you know, a few different races of them, just like, okay. just like with us, you know. Okay. You got your Native Americans and your Asians and your black people and, you know, just like with them. Like the ones that are here, they're real shaggy. They got gray skin. The males average 12 feet tall. Females eight feet tall. Do, do they look like Patty? Uh, you know the the, fa yes. the famous. They do look like Patty. Okay, a lot like her. Really? What? Um, in the in the similarity to Patty's face is it is that similar too? Well, kind of. Can't really tell. You know, like like when I see little Andy right outside, you know, at arm's length away, he kind of looked like that, but he had a bigger nose, but he was male, so you know, you kind of got to factor that in. And you said they had gray skin. Yes. The ones you had black black fur and gray skin. Yep. Uh, you know, it's shaggy, black fur, and then they got the gray skin. All right. You're located in the 
we already asked them located in the Missouri and Iowa border. Um, get us started. We talked a lot about, um, we had a conversation about a year ago and, uh, you told me about the Ford, uh, ask you, when we talked to ask you about the Ford juveniles that ganged up on you. So it's, uh, we'll start with that and get the ball. Well, rolling. They didn't gang up on me, but or surrounded you. There was a scal. She was from Canada. And this is when this COVID crap first broke out. And, uh, she was suffering from a form of leukemia that was going to kill her. And she didn't have very long to go. And I had heard about some Bigfoot that actually had healed a person who who had had cancer. Okay, okay, interesting. So, you know, I was going to try and save this girl. So I went out. I, I could hear the females by the pond. And north of my house, the house and the barn are kind of like on a finger of land type of a hill. And then it drops off pretty good on either side. On the west side, I have a pond. And the face of the dam lines up with about the north end of my barn. And they have a path there. Anyway, I could hear the females down below the dam. And I was going to try and see if I could get them to mind speak with me. (laughs) And so I went out there. I I know my way out there. So, I mean, yeah, it was dark. There was some moon, but, you know, it was still dark enough where you got to be careful. And I I went out there, and as I'm going out there to, to my right, there's one of them flanking me as I'm going, one of the young males. Because, see, you got to understand the family structure. The young males act as guards over the females with dependent children. Okay. So as I'm going how, out there. How, how big is a, a group of them? You know, how big is a clan, let's say? You know, they're all over the world, but when there's here, a group of them here, coming. It's about 20. 20, I'm okay. Sure, I'm sure your habitat and available amounts of food are going to have a very high impact on family size. And what about, are they nomadic or are they stationary? Do they, they travel? stay here year round, okay. year after year after year. Okay. Anyway, now I'm going out and he went around the barn and I went around the other side of the barn and then I heard a wood knock from about, oh, 35 feet away. And then there was another one from the pond come up on my left side. And I got to the top of the hill and I heard like three more wood knocks, but they were further up north, two to the west and one to the east, northeast. And by the time I got to the top of the hill, I had four juvenile males standing there. They were in a box formation with me in the center. Now, they were probably spread about 50 feet apart and from 8 to 11 feet tall. And, you know, I, I just kind of, I don't know. I spread my arms out like Jesus on the cross that showed him open palms. And I said, I'm not here for that. And it was like a calming effect went over all of them because just down the hill in the bottom there, were the five females, and I did hear a baby cry. And everybody went cool. So then I tried using sign language and verbal to see if I could get them to mind speak with me. And I failed. And then I heard a big male howling with his coyotes uh, across the road to the south of my house. So I figured, well, maybe it was his decision. So I try to talk with him. So I just turned and I walked through two of them males like they weren't even there. I can just imagine the look on your faces and confusion like, you know, what the heck is he doing? Because, you know, they could have they could have hurt me. They didn't. They could have killed me. They didn't. But, you know, I tried to communicate with the females what I wanted to do and that the girl was sick and that she, to see if, you know, first ask if they could heal her and then ask if they would be willing to. 
because, you know, I don't know. You kind of get in that woo realm and you don't know. Now, do all of them in a certain clan, can they all read minds? Or is it just some of them that have that ability that's a lot better than in others? I don't know. We don't know. And, you know, the, the hard part is to scientifically prove anything, you about need a willing participant. Well, good luck with that. You think he's going to sit there and let you ask, ask him all these questions for science? He don't care about science. He cares about, you know, your basic stuff. Food, family, and sex, probably. Mm, that's a new one. Do, during that uh during that encounter with the uh, palms out how how long would you say you visually had eyes on the um, the four males or any of them for that matter oh about 10 minutes really so it wasn't that, just a you wasn't just a that, glance that's the most that i've seen at a time you know that's in substantial the open is four now uh, other than that the most i've seen at a time is three now one time this was really amazing i saw the adult males running the deer herd and see here they they domesticate coyotes and each one of the adult males has five coyotes and they use them like a shepherd uses dogs and it was pretty cool because i just it had to be in the fall because i wouldn't have been able to see that side of the west side of my property mm. the hillside because of the leaves if they were green but there were like 20 deer and they were just hauling ass and then about maybe 100 yards behind them were 15 coyotes pretty much in a straight line shoulder to shoulder running behind them and then about 100 yards behind that were three adult males running on all fours through the forest and if you've never seen one, I mm. mean, they're as big as a bison. I mean, an adult male on all fours is still seven and a half feet tall. How uh, is the stance when they run? Is it like a like a like like you and I would run, like hunched to hunt with our with our hind ends sticking no, up, or not do they... when they're running on all fours? Yeah, yeah, all fours. And when they're running on all fours, they're running on all fours, and they're good at it. They take like another kind of posture or they do like an alligator kind of walk. Well, it's kind of hard to describe. Yeah. I mean, you just, that's, that's fine. You, you know what I'm saying? Like I was just trying to picture motion, you know, kind of, kind of like when a gorilla runs on. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That, that makes, that makes sense. That's the, that's the middle picture I was going for, you know, but they don't, but they're looking more down because mm -hmm. they don't, a gorilla looks forward. These guys look more down. And see, that also explains a lot of stuff, too, where, you know, people see they'll find a bare footprint right in the woods. Well, why is that? Did he deliberately step on a bare spot of ground? No, it's when they're moving on all fours. If there's crunchy stuff and they're trying to be quiet, the hand will move it. And then they come along with the foot and step on top of the handprint. And that's why sometimes you'll come up with extra toes or um, a mid-tarsal break that isn't there because what it is is a composite footprint. And really? And people don't understand that. Because, yeah, because they have some with have the different toes. Like, Well, yeah. Okay, they take like this. Can you see my hand good? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's choppy, okay. but I can see it. They do their hand like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now put weight on it. Do your hand like that. Now put weight on it. You like this? Yeah, where's the weight? It's all right back like, on the heel of the hand, isn't it? Yep, right in your... Th okay, so they walk along like that with the... And, and clear, crunchy stuff like sticks and crap out of the way. And then the bigger, wider foot will come and make an impression on top of it. So it gets rid of the faint, you know, the, the handprint for the most part with the toes, but then being larger and wider, it doesn't make as deep of an impression. 
And that's where you get the false mid-tarsal break in a footprint. If that makes sense to it does. I, I know what kind of what kind of um, <clears throat> prints you're talking about. I've seen the ones that didn't look, look like the other ones. Because yeah. you'd be surprised at how how much they're on all fours. Now, you know, I think you get out where you've got more your evergreen forests, you're gonna find them walking upright more. But you know, you get in the hardwood forest, the taller everything is, the more it comes in. And if you're on all fours, you're going to fit in a lot more spots than you otherwise would. If you that makes walking, total sense. You know. Yeah. Plus, if you're a male, it kind of helps provide a little protection for your privates. <laughs> well, think about it. Oh yeah, I've been in I've been in the hardwoods. I live in North Alabama. We got the same same kind of woods. We got hardwoods here, you know. So there's a lot of acorns. One thing I notice is I don't see the vipers. It seems like they keep them all cleaned out. I think I it could be a danger to their children. You know, an adult could take a hit from one. But I also think that, you know, it could kill one of their children. Plus, when it's cold out and they don't want to leave footprints, I think they're raiding them snake dens. Because they're in there and they can't move and they're pretty defenseless and easy pickings. And you ain't going to tell me they're not going to exploit a food source like that. Not if it's easy pickings like that. And I think, it, I think and they're hibernating. Them snake dens. And it's just like going into a refrigerator. I mean, there's plenty of food there. And that, that's another thing, too. When it gets cold out, it would also allow them to stockpile a little bit of food so they're not leaving prints. But, you know, like, for example, meat. If you got mm -hmm. snow on the ground, you, you can stockpile meat and not worry about spoilage. What kind of, what kind of snowfall do you get up there? I'm, not a lot. Near Iowa, I mean, we probably, probably, probably more than we get here. We get, you know... Two inches here. There'll be snow on the ground for about a month. And that's about really? I've been mowing the lawn in December before. So you know it's you say not a lot. I think snow on the ground for a month, and I think devastation. Well, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned, I'd like to see about a half inch on Christmas Eve and the rest of the year I could live without it. Yeah, it's nice on Christmas. Yeah. I think we got wild trees back. He had to do, had to do a hard reboot. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like that one time I, I'd gone to the grocery store and we get back and I get out of my truck and all of a sudden there's one of these bionic, whoo, where the females, they do the barred owl calls. But, I mean, you could feel this one go through you. And... She was right over in the edge of the trees because the forest comes right up to the house. And you know what hickory trees are like with those leaves? Mm -hmm. it's hard to see through. And she was in the edge of the hickory trees, and I wanted to get a good look at her. So while the kid was bringing the groceries in, I made a sandwich. And I'm going over there, and I'm getting by her, and I'm holding my hand out. And I'm going, come on, baby. I said, are you hungry? Come on, sweetheart, you can have it and take it. And I was able to get within seven feet of her before she retreated. I was trying to coax her out to get a good look at her. Really? Did she take the sandwich? No. No. Nope. Like I said, I got about seven feet yeah. from her and she retreated. But I'll tell you what, you know, it's moments like that when you're really alive. I get your blood pumping. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how you how you don't talk about anything else like twenty four seven. But that's you might be used you get to it. Used to it. And like the one time, I remember when I called the one we call little Andy. He ain't so little anymore. But this would have been back in two thousand twelve. There were three females that were making calls at that time, and I'd whistle back to them, a mimic of their call. And then I heard something walking towards me. 
because now on the east side of my house, the house blocks the yard light. So, I mean, it's pitch black. And the driveway goes, and I got my backyard fenced in because I don't let the dogs run. And so, like, 15 feet from the edge of my deck is where the driveway is about. Because that's about how far out the garage goes. And I could hear, there's an old junker down in the gully. And then the hood was off it. And you heard the hood go crinkle. And then a little bit later, I heard the sound of, that gravel makes when you pivot 90 degrees on it. Oh. And then there he was, right on the other side of the fence. Not 15 feet away from me. I mean, he was probably six feet tall. I'm guessing 350 pounds. Oh. And, but he's just a little kid. Oh. Now, at that time, I, I had my pistol in my back pocket. I could have killed him. But what would that make me? I'm not a monster. I'm not going to, I'm not going to harm a child. You know, it's hard to think about it, but think. He was just a little kid, maybe like five years old. So then I'm thinking, think fast, think fast. Now what do I do? Because there he is, you know. And I had bought some Tootsie Pops at the dollar store I was going to leave out for him. And they were just inside the kitchen on the counter. And I grabbed them. Man, I'm peeling them things so fast, throwing them over the fence to him. I heard about four of them go thud when they hit him. And he got a mouthful, and then I called the guy who was my mentor, and he's an older gentleman. At the time, he's in his 70s, and, man, there's one like 15 feet away. What do I do? He goes, well, sit down and see if he comes to you. And I said, okay. And I just use one of these cheap Walmart flip phones, you know. I mean, it's, it's a piece of junk. And they're notorious for dropping calls. Well, drop the call. So poor old Richard, he's probably thinking I got got. <laughs> <laughs> because he's like, yeah, just sit there and see if it'll come to you. And then all of a sudden the phone goes dead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect timing. Yeah, it's like, oh, crap. So I, I go to call him back, and then the, the young one took off and went back to where mom and the other females were. And... I looked the next morning, and the only ones that were left behind were the great ones. Now, I don't know if maybe oh. see them that well. Did you say grape? If he didn't like them. Yeah, the grape flavor. Okay. But now I got a post. I don't blame him. It's like a landscape timber that I have out by the barn. And when we, we put goodies out for them, we put them out there. And... Uh, then we kind of, you know, yell out to them, are you hungry? And then, then bang on the side of the barn and tell them to come and get it. Now, a lot of times you don't see the red Folgers can gone, but once you have an overnight, then you don't see it there no more. And I'm recently married, so the wife, she likes giving them lots of goodies. So they got to have some casserole the other night. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, they like her. They gift her. She's had several sightings. They've mind spoke with her before. And uh, young how uh, how was it telling her what, what was going on in your property before you got married? Like the well, explanation. I just told her, I said, they're here. I said, they won't hurt you. They, they're more than likely to protect you than anything. Because that's kind of how they are, you know. Kind of reminds you like the cartoon gargoyles, how they protect the castle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I feel they watch over me. Ever since I moved in here, I felt like I was being watched. David, I was wondering if you could tell me, what is the earliest time when you, you were aware of these Bigfoot? You know, the very first time. April when was it? Back in 2012, I had my initial sight. Okay. It was about 2.30 in the afternoon on an overcast day. I was in my pickup. I was driving out to the north part of the property where the previous day I had been cutting some firewood. 
and it was all cut, so I was going to load it. And I got to where I was going to make a turn around on top of the hill, and about 75 feet away, right in the edge of the trees, was a dark figure. Now, I believe its back was to me, and I believe it was a female. Because, it, you know, what it most reminded me of was, you know, like the pistol targets you got. If you yep. strip out all the stripes and numbers and all that junk. The outline. Black silhouette. Mm-hmm. Like that. that's, yep. that's like what I saw. I didn't see facial features. Okay. But I'm like, no, no, nah, no way. <laughs> No effing way, you know? And I had to turn because there was one of them locust trees, and I didn't want to run it over and get a flat tire. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then when I look back, it could have took two steps and been gone. Well, anyway, I had to load my firewood, and uh, I'll tell you what. I only took about half of what was cut. Yeah. And I looked over my shoulder a lot. Mm-hmm. And then two days later, I went back to see if I could find any tracks or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, what I thought had been about man-sized turned out to, the slope of the land was a little more. So it turned out to be about eight foot tall, which is consistent with a female. And, uh, you know, so then I, you know, it really sparked my curiosity. I did a lot of reading and Got a hold of some of the wrong type of people, like the BFRO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a cuss word on on our podcast. <laughs> those guys, those guys kicked me out for suggesting UFO thing, and I will never forgive them. Well, till they till they beg for forgiveness. I didn't need them cyber stalking me and creating fake no. accounts just to troll me and stuff like that. That's Were they what, trying to like what, prove you wrong or something? Trying to catch you in a lie. I didn't like what I had to say. The investigator. I said, well, he seemed pretty green. He had a lot of nice, neat equipment, but he really didn't seem like he knew what the hell he was doing. But, you know, not too many people have seen these things. And even Matt Moneymaker isn't seen this shit. That that idiot. I call him Scoop. Did you say Matt Moneymaker? Yeah, I call him Scooter. <laughs> or Bobo. What's that guy's name? Bobo? Lost all that yeah, weight. Now nah, it looks like he's on crack. Looks like he had cancer. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've, just from the... But like with, with Moneymaker, you know, he wanted to call me out and, oh, show me a picture. Well, see, he he was involved with that Erickson Project Matilda fake thing that Chewbacca costume that they doctored up and call Matilda. He oh, authenticated one of the close-up that pictures that was a genuine Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. So obviously, you know what that tells you? He's never seen one, at least not up close. Because if he had, he'd know that that was not. This- this moneymaker fellow, I'm not familiar with him. Is he just got like a channel? Is he is he just somebody who talks about Bigfoot? Is he with the I BFRO? Mean Bigfoot, the show that was on oh, for a decade. Okay. okay. You know, yeah, the, know. Fat, the fat little chubby egomaniac guy. Yeah. Okay. I knew I knew who you meant. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I I've heard of the show, but yeah, okay. That's good. Yeah, I never wanted to watch that show because I was like, how many seasons do they have of this show? They haven't found Bigfoot yet. I mean. Doesn't seem like well, and they never would because it's not <laughs> how it works. Right. If you find Bigfoot, your show's done, aren't you? Right, right, right. And, and it would point. be on the news if they found Bigfoot. I'm like, I don't know if I haven't found him yet because he hasn't been on the news and he'd been shooting for eight well, months. Well, and the thing you got to realize is most of the stuff out there is people wanting attention and hoax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 95% of what you're going to find out there is all fake. Um, so you, you had your encounter in, two, in 2012. How long had you been living in that area before that? Encounter? I moved in in 2007. Oh, okay. So you had a, a long so time. So there have been some there. weird things happen, okay. and stuff come up missing, and, you know, stuff like that. But, um, you know, I just, there, the, there it was. So then I reached out to them, and I'd call them, and they'd come. 
And I tried a lot of different things too, because, you know, the females would come in and you know how girls are. If, if, if a guy has gone for a while and he's got a shirt and it smells like him, they'll sleep with it because they like that. Yes. So I thought, well, they're pretty stinky. <laughs> so I did this experiment in the summer to where three days in a row, I got my shirt just soaking wet with sweat and dried it out and, and I left it out there. Well, I'm not sure, but they might have washed it in the pond because it reeks <laughs> so bad. Because <laughs> When I left it out there and I came back, it was completely wet. And I smelled it because I thought maybe a male took a leak on it or something, mm. you know. And there wasn't none of that. It, it smelled cleaner than when mm. I put it out there and it was completely soaked. So I don't know. I think they <laughs> washed it for me. <laughs> well, you know, what about if a, big, if a Bigfoot says you smell bad, you need to take a yeah. bath. That's and, yeah. and I was gonna, I was gonna ask, are, are these guys? Do they, do they have a strong smell? You know, sometimes they call them skunk apes. Do they have a strong well, smell or no? Here, here's what you need to realize: the adult males that hunt are the only ones that smell like skunk. Okay, okay. Now think about it: when you're big old smelly wookie in the woods and you want to mask your scent, you need something pretty strong. So they use skunk or roadkill or what's available. Okay. But just think kind of like when a deer hunter goes up in a tree, what's he do? He masks his scent. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. So they do that. Now, the females and the young males, they all kind of got a real musky smell that's kind of kind of reminds you of sulfury. Really? You know, like like burnt smoke smoke balls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yep. musky. Now, I think some of that could be from urine getting in their hair. Sure. Um, now, what about the bodies? What's going on with their dead bodies? What do they do? I don't know. Okay. I've never witnessed a dead one. I've never witnessed what they do. So, you know, different people say that they bury them deep. Right. That's and what, look, look at all the different things that have been found by the Smithsonian and covered up. Okay, yeah. another. Go ahead, go ahead, oh. uh, Another question I had was, um, okay, what? Okay, since you you've had successful interactions with them, I, I would love to know what are the things that really work well if you want to interact with them peacefully, and what are the things that really don't work well. You know, what are the things we need to avoid doing, and what are the things that do work well from your experience? Well, one thing that will give you a lot better results okay. is when you go to the woods, announce yourself. Okay. You want them to know that you're there, right? Yes, sir. Well, do out a real loud yoo-hoo. It's like knocking on somebody's door before you walk into their house. Okay. It shows them respect. Okay. And they'll be a lot less hostile. Because that way, if there's females and little ones that want to hide, they can get to where they feel safe. And then you don't have to deal with all the reaction from the adolescent males. That makes sense. So what should we do? Just a holler? Just a holler your name out? Just a well, loud, like loud yoo-hoo, you know, okay. like I'm here. And okay. Everybody home? You make Stop some going. noise. Okay, now, um, I don't believe in all these rogue males that everybody's talking about. They don't know. They're just trying to sound important. They're, I think it's just the young males that guard the females. Because they're out like sentinels. So, yeah, that's what you see. That's the ones that act the most hostile. And why are they acting hostile? Because you're too close to mom and the kids. So while you're focused on him, his, not only are his brothers flanking you, but mom and the kids are on their way to where they feel safe, and you won't even know they were even there. Okay. That makes sense. That's why they act that way. You got to think, why do they behave that way? And they're not all mean. They're doing that to get your attention focused on them and away from their loved ones. They're very protective of the females because they outnumber the females probably two to one. Okay. That's good to know. Interesting. All right. So that's one thing that we should do. 
what is, so what's one thing we should avoid that maybe a lot of people think is a good idea? Well, if you're going to leave something for them to eat, leave it on your way out. Okay. Makes sense. You know, I like to use red Folgers cans because they're easy to spot. Okay. You know, you can look from a long ways away and say, oh, that can that was there isn't where it was. Okay, that's good. You know, that's why I like them. And, uh, you know, they like a lot of different things like eggs in the shell. Okay. Because well, they're right. pretty seasonal, aren't they? Not to us. You can go to the store every month of the year and buy chicken eggs. Right. But they can't. Right. Well, sometimes you put a couple of chicken eggs on top of stuff. They seem yeah. to like gravy trained dog food. Gravy trained dog food. Okay. Now, do you open it? Do you open the lid? If it's got a pull tab, can they figure that out with the dog? I, food? I usually just put a scoop in with whatever okay. else I'm putting in there. Okay. I give them my old chicken bones. You know, like when we have fried chicken, we throw all our bones in there, and they seem to love those. Because uh, the first time that I did that, the very next morning, the coffee can was right at the bottom of the stairs to the deck, uh -huh. which means it would have had to have traveled from next to the barn against the wind across two fences and to end up there. So I figured that must mean they wanted more because they liked it. So ever since I've been doing that, and, you know, I leave a little extra on there. So, so they put it back, letting you know that uh, that, that was yeah, a good, that was a good, good. choice. I want some more of that. Uh, See. I have, I have a, a specific question about gifting. Okay, so I don't, ear... I don't give them, like, chocolate. And all okay. that. Well, why not chocolate? What, what specifically are you worried about chocolate? Well, because it doesn't seem to make it home from the store. It's too good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's, why I don't give, that's why I don't ever gift them bacon. Don't ever make it. Now, they absolutely love that maple-flavored bacon ends. A bit. And if you're trying to draw them in, yes. you're not going to find anything that throws out more scent than that. Maple flavored bacon in. So are you talking about just like cooking some bacon that's infused with the maple flavor? Is that what it is? Or is this something it, else? It's like the bacon ends and then they put that maple flavor with them. Okay. And it's just kind of miscellaneous bacon chunks, you know, like you get to the end of the thing. And okay. It didn't go through the machine perfect. And some of it's thick and some of it isn't. And it's, but they put that maple flavor with it. Okay. That really kicks out a immensely strong scent. Trust. It's basically just a mixed, mixed, mixed and matched pork pork belly that they sell with the flavor, so they don't have to waste it. Okay, did you, a lot, you of, a lot of people mix it with a uh, venison. Okay, so yeah, probably have to go to a specialty butcher shop. Maybe that's not something at a grocery. Yeah, store. you're not uh, getting it at Walmart. Okay, I've never seen it there. I know what he's talking about, though. It's usually at like a, a hometown meat market or Asian market kind of thing. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah. I used now, to Buy it by a ten pound box. Mm -hmm. Okay, put a little of it out there for them because they loved it. I've and heard of people taking deer meat and mixing it in there to give it a little fat consistency. I, I wanted some advice on, on gifting. So there's an area. I'm a biologist, a field biologist, so I go into woods and I I do research mostly with insects. But there's an area that's a natural preserve, and there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings there. So what I think is happening. This is what I want to do. I want to start gifting them. So what I was thinking about doing is I go to this map, you know, it's called wood8.org, and I can yeah. see all the all the areas where sightings have been. And then what I want to do is go to the nearest creek, because I, I believe they probably travel through creeks, or they use creeks to travel, because that's what I do. Um, you know, it's a quick way to efficiently well, get through. Well, and all the animals go there, too, including game animals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what I was going to do is just go to one of these creeks uh, near one of the sightings and then leave my camp and just go away. Is that good enough? Because I don't live there. It's like 40 minutes away. And maybe go there once a mm. week and just, just try leaving it there. And what is it that you're leaving in there? Uh, well, just like you said, I guess I, I, I will use the uh, Folgers can, like you said. I'll probably use that gravy train dog food. Hey, you uh, had maybe... frozen up when you said leave your, uh, I think you said leave your cameras. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, leave a Folgers can. Of, okay, Folgers of Folgers. can. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With food, with food in it. Yeah. And you know, of course, they like the apples and stuff they recognize. Okay. And they seem to like hard candy. Okay. Interesting. So something you could do is go around with a hammer and nail and uh -huh. and a pocket full of suckers. Okay. And if you took a hammer and nail and you made a place, then you could slip a sucker in the tree. Okay. They just have it sticking out. Yeah. Okay. That's good. They seem like to like those. And you can get them cheap at the dollar store. Right, right. Interesting. Okay. I mean, try, try different things as far as uh, other gifts. Let's see. I, what have they taken? Uh, they've taken a rusty old hatchet. They've taken several machetes. Oh, <laughs> that's that's scary. That's a movie right there. Bigfoot with a yeah. machete. Yeah, but like this changes the game. Machetes and they'll. Sw I had them for German Luger. Before, open for that before, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> pack of cigarettes. I've had them swipe a lighter. What about al what about alcohol? <laughs> American Indian didn't do so good with that. I don't think I. <laughs> yeah, good have, point. Have good a point. picture in uh, a Bigfoot with a machete yeah. and a hatchet and a lighter. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, and a, and, and a bottle of whiskey. Look out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're just seeing my uncle in the woods. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, there's no Bigfoot at all. That's just my uncle Bull. Mm -hmm. uh, tell him to come home. We miss him. <laughs> now, I was talking to somebody in Minnesota who's gifting them and. Tell me if this rings true to you. They said what was interesting is that uh, that Bigfoot hates anything with eyes on it, like a doll. They they don't like dolls. Anything that has mm. an eye on it does that ring true? Do you think that that could have any validity to it? Yeah, because uh, I've never really had them take anything that had the eyes, except one little stuffed toy. Okay. But were the eyes don't... realistic, or were they maybe just like really like little dots? Okay, so maybe it wasn't that big of a deal. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't like the little googly eyes or anything. Yeah, the ones with the huge, yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay. But, and then... Um, and I've had them take pretty rocks. Okay. Like polished rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like little ones you get at the, like the gift shop at a museum or something. You buy them by the hand. Yeah. Well, anything that's been through a tumbler. They like okay. crystals. I've had them swipe crystals off the deck before. Interesting. Um, now, if I started doing this, this thing, like, you know, leaving gifts, like, say, once a week, you know, how long do you think it would take for me to start receiving gifts back? Um, I don't know. And you might not recognize it if they do, because it's going to be something natural. Okay. Because they don't shop at Walmart, so. All right. Right. <laughs> what about hair? Have you been able to get any hair? Have they left hair behind on accident, maybe? Oh, my friend found some at a kill site okay. where he found like the remains of three or four deer. Uh -huh. And it was on the fence, but he touched it all. Mm -hmm. But I figure, you know, what it costs to run DNA, I don't have money for that anyway. Well, see, what I would do with the hair, everybody goes to DNA. I actually would not do DNA on hair. What I would do, which is cheaper, I could I actually have access, so I could do it for free. But what I would do with the hair is run a scanning electron microscope through it. So this is a high-powered microscope. So you can it. look and see the scaling on the hair and stuff. Yeah, exactly. For comparison. You, yeah, exactly. You know, and that that's instant. I don't have to send it out to a lab. It doesn't cost me any money. And we have we have papers. People have documented different animal hairs in North America. So you yeah. can compare it and see what that's what I would do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, there were like several different colors of hair, right? And you still have access to them, or does your friend have access to yeah, them? Yeah, I got access. It's okay in a baggie in my dresser drawer, along with a All couple right. of uh, cats. Well, yeah, if you wanted to mail them to me, like I said, I would, I would share my results with you, and it would be scanning electronic stuff. Well, I just kind of keep that, you know, because. You know, so you send it to somebody and it's gone. Right. Well, if you have multiple strands, you know, I just yeah, need one you strand. Don't send something to somebody you expect to ever get back. Sure. 
So sure. that's how this outfit seems to work, you know, with the Bigfoot community. If they can get a hold of it, they're going to keep it. I can't imagine the bull crap you had to deal with if you've told any of the big time names. Well, and you know, so many of them are such fakes anyway. Yeah, I've noticed that the people we've talked to, you know, we got you, we got Fred, uh, Jeremy, and a couple other ones. Like the ones who actually, like you can look them in the eyes. That's a, just a different person than the people that say they've seen it on TV. Yeah. They're like, you, you're a different person than the people you see on TV that talk about it. And the other three or four people we've talked to, they're not, the, it's not the same. You could, there's a, there's a different personality. And well, they live here and I live here and I wanted to live yeah. in peace with them. And the first time I tried communicating that was with an adult male and I could tell by the smell. He was close enough to smell him and said, you know, can we live in peace? I said, I want to hurt you. I don't want you to hurt me. And he hit me with that infrasound hard. And it made me physically shudder. And it was like anger and fear, hatred and doom all rolled into one directed at me. And then he hit me with it again. I went in the house and uh, I didn't sleep the whole night. Sure. And I sat there with uh, my Ruger Mini 14 with a 40 round mag across my lap all night long, thinking, God, if he tries coming in after me, I'm going to do what I can. Cool. Well, is that the, uh, that's related? You had mentioned you had some clairvoyance. Yeah, I was going to ask about the mind speak. Can you, can you tell us about that? Well, now I haven't had him directly mind speak with me before, okay. but. I did have one that would come to me in my dreams for a while. Oh. And, you know, sometimes she'd be in a human form, and other times she'd be in her Bigfoot form. Oh. But, you know, it was like kind of spying to check it out. And then, uh, well, she got to liking me a little too much, and I said no. Oh. And that was, and then she don't come to me no more. Wow. Dreams. What did the uh, human form in the dream look like? Like a girl that was a young girl, kind of pretty, but uh, but an odd duck, you know. <laughs> the, the horse girl. Well, the clothes the clothes were all weird, and you know the mannerisms weren't there. You know, like your social mannerisms. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I'm just picturing like what a Bigfoot would think a person would wear. <laughs> even I mean, even if they're sm- smart enough to obviously do. Well, the person was wearing, either. I don't know, like a brown fur coat. And, yeah. Well, of course they were. What? And some weird funky hat and had glasses and just, you know, young gal in their 20s looking. I'm thinking like the Bigfoot version of the Mars attacks, chewing mm-hmm. on the nitrogen gum. You know what I'm talking about? Wild trees? <laughs> uh, when, the, when the alien dresses like a human lady? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Think, the tall one. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. think and and thinking she knows what humans like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all it's all awkward. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the kind of thing you don't think about. Come to you in your dreams. What does a uh, what does uh, what do they call him in Alaska? <laughs> Harry. What does Harry Man think that? Yeah. The white man likes. <laughs> well, and you know, they, a lot of places they they call the owl woman mm. because they all do the those owl calls. And see, the thing is, when they do their owl calls. Each one's different. And the last time I checked, owls don't hunt in groups. Oh. They're solitary. You got one on the nest, and you got one that goes and hunts, and they take turns. Mm-hmm. And then when their children are big enough, they run them off. So if you're having like five of them all together year-round, every year, they might might not be the feathered kind. They might be the furry kind. Interesting. Well, what do you think? Only two owls at a time is all you hear. Well, and if you hear three, you should hear fighting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, because you know the owls are territorial, they're they're going to run an intruder out of their territory or get run out. And if you're not hearing fighting, then it's probably not that. And then they get all primate like a chimpanzee. What do you think is your intelligence's level? Is it at the human level or above it or slightly above below it? It's above. above. It. Okay. We, we misjudge them because just because 
they don't use technology, they don't need it. See, they've learned to live in harmony with nature while we've tried to master it. Right. Absolutely. See, man tries whatever he can't command, control, or conquer. What's he do? He kills it. Right. So that's kind of why they avoid us, because we're violent. Now, another question I have is, now, in the fossil record, we saw, we see that there, there was about, I, I'm not sure if it's exact, but about nine different types of humans that used to live alongside us, like Neanderthals, uh, Homo erectus. I, I've always wondered if some of these species that we thought it were extinct, because we have the fossil skulls, if they haven't really gone extinct, if they are Bigfoots, you know, do you think well, Bigfoot is, I, what I is think, I think some of it could have been, you know, the inferior species is going to, They'll either take the females for slaves, kill the males, and then they either get bred into the gene pool or oh. bred out of existence. Right. I think that's what happened with your Denisovians. Okay. I think they were an inferior species. I think that, uh, you know, the slave trade probably is what happened to them. And that's why they show up in our, in our genetic makeup is because they were traded up the females were traded in slavery and just bred out of existence okay. where the males were hunted and killed. May, I mean, how else do you explain the trace gene and you don't right. find, you're not finding bodies. Right. Obviously there weren't a hell of a lot of them because otherwise there'd be some kind of fossil record you would think, but you know, it also shows that they were most likely a forest dweller, and the forest is not very good at preserving fossils. That's true. You've got so many different things that will eat bones. Even deer eat bones. Of course. And, and all your rodents and stuff, they all eat on bones. So that's why, you know, you're lucky to find teeth. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, we found a, well, a member of my family found a, uh, a, a 10 point rack in the woods last week. Yeah. And, uh, here it is August. And for that kind of rack to be present in August means it would have to been killed like last year and nothing eaten off of it. We think somebody had dropped it in the woods after a house robbery, mm. something like that. And so, yeah. And I found like, or shot it and couldn't find it. Oh yeah. I mean, but for it to be right where it was with no chipmunk marks on it. Like yeah, I've, I yeah. found medallions of a, it looked like a, a big, a big 50 cent piece that was, was a piece of the bottom of an antler. Yeah. Like stuff, stuff eats the crap out of that stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, like all your squirrels, porcupines and, and all your, all your rodents. And I don't know about where you're at in Alabama, but we've mm -hmm. got a hell of a lot of different varieties of little rodents here. Yeah. We don't have porcupines. We got everything else. You know, the cats are always, bringing in some kind of little critter. <laughs> yeah. And there's always a different kind of rat. Yeah. I've never seen that. Or a mole. Do you think, you think these Bigfoot will remain hidden forever? Do you think with the way technology is going and with no, the they can't. Okay. And let's face it. The military has taken samples live and dead. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Think no about time. it. It's a yeah. super soldier. If you had a squad of them, they can run over 50 miles an hour, night vision. They, they can communicate telepathically. They don't need equipment. And, and the kind of ground that they can cover, they could really do some devastating damage. Yes. Now, in your, in your area, near your property, have there been I – got, I got a two-parter here um, – are you the only one that's um, having experiences in your little area and community? Oh, no. no. Okay. I got a buddy that he hunts a lot. He comes over. He's seen them. I was going to say, because if that happened where I grew up, watching just, them. Mm -hmm. they were up in behind a briar bush, shoulder to shoulder, watching him, walking down along the river bottoms, looking for shed antlers. And I just wonder how many how many deer have been lost. Time. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll swipe, I've had them swipe five deer from me before. I bet that's happened more than once. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, if they can get to it before you do, they're going to take it. But they look at, you got to look at it through your, their eyes. It's like, well, that's my food. Why don't you go kill a cow? That's your food. Right. Next time I miss one, I'm not going to blame my scope. I'm blaming a Bigfoot. <laughs> write it down. No, man, Bigfoot. I totally shot it. <laughs> and uh, um, my second part, two, 2.0 of that question. Um, in, in your area, have there, have there been any, like, uh, I want to say lights in the sky, but alien activity? Like anything that might coincide? I've seen orbs a couple times, and then I've right. seen a couple times – other people were with me when I seen it. Now, mm-hmm. I didn't have my glasses on, so I can't say how high up in the sky it was. But it did it moved like a living creature or something. Um, it kind of had a faint green glow like a glow stick, and it was seemed kind of oval shaped. But you know, it kind of moved like somebody doing the backstroke or like a jellyfish or something. Mm, I get what you're saying. And it was up there. I've seen it twice. I've seen it in the summer, and then I've seen it when it was like only 22 degrees out. So it wasn't a bug of any mm-hmm. kind or like one of those uh, lunar moths or anything. Right. You know, so it can rule that out because they ain't going to be active at 22 degrees. Right. No. That's true. That's kind of the same motion as the, those gimbal, gimbal footages. And now I've heard them, um, they mimic all kinds of stuff, too. Like when it's 22 degrees outside, and you're hearing a bullfrog on the next hill over away from the pond. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, there's not going to be a bullfrog out there. That you can hear a bullfrog way away from water? Not to me. So they're good mimics, basically. Well, sure, they can mimic no. about anything. They can mimic people's voices, too. What about these reports? They're very rare, but I've heard reports that the Bigfoot turn into the orbs of light. Is there any connection you think with no, the orbs? I've never of- seen that happen. Do you think it's possible? Do you think there's a connection between both of them? In some well, light? that's a form of energy. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a maybe the orb is a ghost. Right. I've heard that as well, yeah. I think that, I that could know. have... Now, now the orbs that I saw were white. They were probably, I would say, about the size of a volleyball. I saw, I've seen the same thing. And they didn't radiate light out from them. They right. were bright white, but it didn't radiate. Did they leave a trail behind them, like a light trail? No, they'd be on, and then all of a sudden, it's like you just click the switch, and they're gone. Okay. Now, I, I do have a picture that uh, I can hook you up with okay. that uh, there's Bigfoot in it and they look semi-transparent. Mm. Now, people talk a lot about that cloaking, but I think I actually got something fairly convincing because you can kind of see through them. I mean, there's something there, but it looks like a little one on the shoulder of an adult reaching over into its mouth because think about it then lo- the little ones are probably like ours it takes them a while to grow teeth mm-hmm. so maybe the adults like chewing right. acorns or something and the little ones reaching in getting some of the already chewed up food in order to eat sure that makes that's sense. what it looks like to me and then down at the bottom is a dark figure that you can see with real hollowed out dark eyes, big forehead, and you know, just a child down well, at the bottom. That, that sounds incredible. Yeah, I would definitely love to see that. And you know, it's everybody goes, well, Why don't you have all these pictures? Show me a picture, show me a picture. And like, what it get your own. <laughs> well, yeah. Because no matter what you show them, it's never good enough. They're mm-hmm. always going to cry, fake, foul, Photoshop. It's just not good enough. And I just kind of, you know, rather than casually extend my middle finger because words <laughs> sometimes just aren't enough. Yeah. Humans are the worst. I just don't deal with those people. Absolutely. I don't blame you a bit. I mean, they're just total trolls. It's like, what if I am I supposed to uh, take everything that I've learned and 
any evidence that I've gathered and put it all into a neat little file folder for you so that you can go and just completely skeptic it and trash it to your heart's content? No. I ain't going to do that. I don't blame you a bit. I like your um, and then, and Facebook you profile picture. let say, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little mean to some of them. I said, and you need to follow somebody that does things the way that you like. And I ain't doing that. Just like the trail, trail cameras, useless. All they do is repel them. What about the trail cameras? Is, what, what are they catching on to? Is it the smell? Is it the electromagnetic? Well, they're probably watching you put them up. They can read your <laughs> mind so they know what they're after. Nobody ever um, considers that part. And then uh, they avoid them. And plus, they can hear them. They can probably smell them. Uh, some people suggest that they have a photographic memory of the forest so they can, you know, spot them easily. But you, know, you ever notice how you look at trail cam pictures? Deer's always looking right at the cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of them have a deer looking right at the thing because yeah. they make noise. Yeah. Sometimes you find a blur or whatever, and but you know they're pretty pretty careful not to get caught by that. Well, what and about that, this? Okay, if you could just humor me, what about this? What if I I'm going to say me, okay? But what if I set up a trail camera, but instead of pointing the camera where I want to shoot, what I do is I point the camera at a mirror, you know, the mirror, I set up a little mirror in a tree or something. And then the mirror is reflecting what I actually want to shoot. So that, you know, it's kind of I've like- I've heard of people trying that, but uh -huh. I've never heard of them getting any results. Because, okay. you know, there's that one where that MK Davis- MK Davis, exactly, yeah. Goes where they're shining through a window. A lot of that's been debunked. Okay. Hmm. All right, well, that is continue. interesting. You almost you almost have to have like a certain level of trust, like David has to get anything from them. Yeah, which is why they remain secretive to this day. Don't blame them a bit. Absolutely. Team seclusion. Like that MK Davis. I remember asking him a couple of questions because he posted this footprint that looked like somebody carved it out of a board. Mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, where'd you get that?" And immediately blocked. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Very suspicious. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree, man. A lot of people in the paranormal community I've met, you know, the ones that, not, not the witnesses, but the people that have some kind of voice, mm -hmm. you know, they have this ego, you know, they have this ego and they're just not polite. And it's like, they're not very genuine. I don't get that impression from them. Well, a lot of them, they start out good. Okay. And then they get this following. Yeah. And then it starts to feed their ego. And then when their following starts to drop off, they got to feed them something. And that's when they start making their own evidence. That's a cycle. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. I'm not going to name names. The people out there doing it, they know who they are. Okay. <laughs> like the uh, God, it was a wilderness guy that had the Bigfoot guy with him. Had that picture of the Bigfoot's eye through the tree. Like, come on, man. That, you oh, yeah. made that. Let's you see. made that. Exactly. It's not Bear Grylls, is it the other guy? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what his name is, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. You know, you're talking about the guy that's got a documentary on Netflix where he apparently shows a Bigfoot face. There's no, yeah. no Bigfoot in that film. No. That's all hoaxed. It's like, all fake. I just... You could almost you could almost tell the people. Well, I say tell. Basically, anybody that has a picture is fake. When it it's that that clear, like you can just tell it. It's like that's not, especially when it's, when they're all different formats of faces. Well, and the one mm -hmm. thing you can tell is made by a taxidermist. Mm -hmm. Looks about like when they do those uh, wampus cats, abominable snowman out of the deer's ass. Yeah, the wampus cats. Looks about the same. <laughs> you seen those wild trees with the uh, yeah. I love that at the Jackson County Fair every year they had one. Like, what is that? The Wampus Cat, Swamp Monkey. Whatever you want to call it. Wow. And, you know, a lot of people want attention. 
Right. And most people don't have the guts to try and interact with them. They see the size, they're immediately freaked out and scream at them and shit because they're scared. And then they just go separate directions. Right. I've had some encounters with wild animals in the woods and I always, um, I always just remain calm. You know, I don't make any sudden movements. I don't make any eye contact and I just kind of back away slowly or I just don't, ex- I try not to exude any fear because that'll just make things worse. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm still alive. So I think it's been working well for me. <laughs> and with a Bigfoot, if you show them fear, then they'll try and bully you like a schoolyard bully. Sure. Scare you even more. Yeah. Because they think it's funny how how chicken shit people are. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I had this guy here. And he's out under parked underneath the yard light in his camper. And he's got his uh, English bulldog cuddled up with him. He's got a female on each side, and they're calling back and forth. They're messing with his stuff on the tailgate. And he has two chicken shit to look out the window. It's like, there's your chance. You could have seen one. You could have looked <laughs> out the window. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it's not for the faint of hearts uh, dealing with, uh, well, with any wildlife, honestly, not just Bigfoot. But Bigfoot is probably the ultimate wildlife because it's unknown. It's dangerous. It's intelligent. It's, it's pretty high They're up. They're not there. dangerous unless you provoke them. You have the potential. I mean, they have the potential to kill you if you want it. No, to. I but. went back one night. I was taking a snack out. Oh. And on that side of the barn, there's one bay that has like one of those doors that roll on wheels on a pipe. Oh. And that face is west. And I'm about to put my little offering on the food pole. And I hear this growl. It sounds like a cross between a big dog and a grizzly bear. Come from at least 10 feet off the ground in the darkness inside the barn. And, you know, if you ever had an oh shit moment, that was it. I mean, like, um, think fast, think fast, think fast. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So what do I do? I turn my back on him. Okay. Now... The reason I did that is to show him that I wasn't trying to trap him. Okay. It showed him that I trusted him not to hurt me. Mm -hmm. I let him know I didn't care he was there. And the fact that I set goodies there, I'm sure he appreciated. Mm -hmm. Now, on the way back to the house, when I walked back past that opening, I'll admit that I had a little more spring in my step and went a little quicker. (laughs) Ten years younger. At least past that (laughs) side of the barn. But, you know, I was out there and it was dark. And I got to the point where I don't carry a gun or a light or nothing anymore. And there's nothing out there going to hurt you. No. (laughs) For sure. Well, you know, you go out and if you're not used to the woods, just like hearing a deer distress call, freak you out. Yeah, man. And it you sound, look at sounds like you, a banshee. Well, it sounds like the raptors on mm-hmm. the park. I've oh. got one of those in my bag. I have to. Uh, it makes the does go crazy. Yeah, the fawn in distress call sounds like immortal hell breaking loose. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it works when the does get that maternal instinct, come chugging in, pop pop. <laughs> Well, and, you know, you hear all kinds of stuff. Just like they throw little stuff like at your tent or whatever, pine cones, little rocks. Now, when my boy Ralph was here, they used to pick him off with pebbles all the time. (laughs) Now, granted, he's kind of big and fat and moves around like Kung Fu Panda. (laughs) So it's kind of comical when they pick him off. Now, they've thrown stuff near me, but never directly at me. Right. One, one time I had, uh, now it was just me living here. And, well, not knowing exactly how many of them were out there, I was 
hitting on the hundred proof Jeremiah weed, doing double shots. Mm-hmm. And by the time I went out there, I was about three sheets to the wind. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, how's my girls and stuff? <laughs> and then I hear this rock come ripping mm-hmm. through the trees and it hits the roof of the tin shed across the driveway from me. Mm-hmm. And it sounds as loud as a gunshot. Blam! You know. Now, if you know birds of prey, any owl would have been long gone. Mm-hmm. When I hear something as loud as a gunshot. Well, I just kind of laughed and said, you little shit, you know. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the females really started carrying on. And I earned a lot of respect that night by not showing fear. Hey, that's good. That's a cultural thing then. They respect that, uh, the, the balls, I guess, the spine. <laughs> well, fear. to be the difference between an alpha and a beta male. Yeah. That's good. That's good to know. Show, show you got a little, a little balls, and you know it's. Don't force yourself on them, but it's a fine line. Yeah, it's a fine line. You want to stand your ground. You want to, uh, you know, not be pushed around, but you don't want to be aggressive, overly aggressive. Yeah, you don't want to be aggressive to them, but you know, you got to let them know that what they're doing isn't having the effect that they're after. Now, has, has there ever been a group of people? Um, say a certain characteristic that comes to your house and just doesn't have an experience, like maybe somebody with diff- different personality trait. Here, they might not have seen them, but they saw evidence of them, whether it's um, the stick structures that they found yeah. on, on their own. I just mean like the personal experience, like say like you have the, 